Hello and welcome to another Murders at Karlov Mana Draft. I'm Paul Chion and we are still continuing our road to rank one. We are still rank number three. We haven't fallen off uh, and we are still going for it here. It has been tough. We went 7-0 and we're still number three. So I don't know what the gap is. I really wish there was a better way to find out. But we're going to keep going and uh, see if we can get this momentum going here. We'll note that before we do start this draft... If you like this content and wanted to support the channel, I did launch my Patreon channel. Shout out to all the current patrons. The link is in the description below. All right, let's head into this draft. Let's open something nice. And was this something nice? Hmm. Not especially. Not in, in terms of bombs. I, I was looking for a rare, but Illicit Masquerade is definitely not a bomb. So what are we looking at for the commons? We have Shock. Tunnel Tipster and Dog Walker. And then for Uncommons, we have Glint Weaver. So I'm not going to take Glint Weaver. I haven't had as much success with mid range green decks. So I'm not that interested in just taking the Glint Weaver because when you draft the many multicolor green decks, it's kind of an arms race to see who has the most bombs and what you can ramp into. I'd rather try to take a, something a little more flexible. So I'm looking at Shock and Dog Walker, and I think they're pretty close in power level. But I think I'm going to take the Dog Walker. The reason being is in Red White, I do think Dog Walker might be a little bit better than Shock. But by first picking the Dog Walker, this goes into any Red or White deck. And it's going to be a card that you're happy having in either deck. So let's go ahead and take the Dog Walker here just to give us a little more flexibility with how the rest of the packs will go. Moving on to this pack, we see that a rare is missing. And we have some uncommons to choose for, to choose from rather. And I think the common that I'd be looking at here is Market Watch Phantom to go with the Dog Walker. Uh, red, red White Aggro is a pretty nice archetype to have. And you can never have too many two drops. As far as uncommons go, we're looking at both Karlov Watchdog and Case of the Burning Masks. So those are also considerations. They're all Boros cards. And, you know, theoretically speaking, if I was Red and White, what would I want the most? Well, if I knew that my curve was going to be great... So if I already had a bunch of go-wide stuff and a bunch of cheap things, then I would take the Karlov Watchdog. But there's this early in the draft, I think I would rather take the 2-drop and then figure out if I need the 4s later. So here, I'm going to take the Market Watch Phantom over Karlov Watchdog, recognizing that if I do have a good Boros deck with a really good curve, then the um, Karlov Watchdog is something that I would want. Additionally, with the Karlov Watchdog, you really want it specifically in red-white. Whereas if you're green-white and you can't go white as much, then the Market Watch Phantom would likely just be a better card for your deck, right? And the first pick Dog Walker doesn't necessarily mean that we're red-white. It could just mean that we're white or red. Moving on to this pack, we have Museum Night Watch, which is kind of an unexciting third pick, or I can take something like a Loxodon Eavesdropper as a more powerful option in green. I think it's between the two of those, and I think I'm going to take the higher upside pick in the Loxodon Eavesdropper over the Nightwatch. I think the Nightwatch is fine, but nothing that special, whereas I really do like the Loxodon Eavesdropper. Maybe we can end up in a green-white deck. We'll see. And yeah, it looks like green is flowing. So this is one of those... <clears throat> excuse me. You stay open, right? And you... Take the most flexible picks. We did that with the Dog Walker, and we did that, we did that with the Market Watch Phantom, and it might be paying off for us here. Here we have the choice between Bite Down on Crime and Nervous Gardener. And this early, I do like Bite, but I'm going to take Nervous Gardener just because it, it's another two drop for a deck, and it gives us another level of flexibility. I think the pick is close between the two, and generally Green White, green white is a little more aggro, but like I said, early on, I, pro I, I put a very, very high priority on my mana curve. And then I figure, I want to kind of figure things out after I have kind of the cheap cards covered. Moving on to this pack, it might look like white could be drying up. And there is an evidence examiner in this pack. That is by far the best card in this pack. There's nothing else that really stands out to me. I'm not a big fan of Sanguine Savior unless I'm not, unless I'm in white black. That's a kind of the only time where I'm happy playing the Sanguine Savior. So I'll take the Evidence Examiner here on the spec in case we do end up blue-green based on the signals that we're getting here. And then moving on here, this is a pack with no green cards. Pack with no green cards, we have Bubble Smuggler and Frantic Scapegoat. There's a Coral Whipcracker, but not too interested in that because I think that would be splashing the Whipcracker and that's not something that I really want to do. Blue seems like it could be... 
It could be open. Maybe we should end up in a blue-green deck here. There is that Frantic Scapegoat if I wanted to go red-white, but um, I don't like Frantic Scapegoat so much in red-green, and green seems kind of open. So I'm going to take the Bubble Smuggler here just because I think there's a higher chance that this makes our deck over the, um, the Frantic Scapegoat. Yeah, but this is kind of an odd draft. We're trying to stay flexible, but it doesn't necessarily look like white is super open. And uh, we're just kind of... Every, every pack, every pack is getting pretty interesting here. Uh, here we have the choice between Rubble Belt Maverick, Gadget Technician, and On the Job. Hmm. You know, I'm gonna th I think I'm going to take the Rubble Belt Maverick here because this goes well in a green-white aggro deck. And also it's a fine card if you want to play like a blue-green... Um, Blue green surveil deck. Surveil. Why am I saying surveil? Blue green, um, because it surveils, of course. Blue green uh um uh, collect evidence deck. It's it's fine in both. So I'm gonna take that here. Now we're gonna take the Panther. Now we're gonna take the Panther. So given how things have shaken out so far, I suppose it would have been nice to have the Glint Weaver first pick, but I'm still okay with this. It looks like we're going to end up in a blue-green deck, though, sadly. We're not seeing a ton of white cards other than this on the job. So I'm going to take this Crime Stopper sprite here and, um, and yeah, just, I guess, transition into uh, a blue-green deck. Even though I tried to avoid it at first. Even though I tried to avoid it at first. Here I'll take a Rift Burst Hellion. We already have a Crime Stopper sprite. I don't want too many copies of this necessarily. And I do like Rift Burst Hellion as just a gigantic um, uh, disguise creature in these blue green decks uh, a lot of it a lot of the reason is because in the blue green decks you generally have a lot of ways to generate mana you have topiary panthers you have nervous gardeners you have tunnel tipsters so you do want mana sinks in the late game and the rift burst hellion is a pretty good mana sink for that type of deck and um and yeah i mean this still looks okay this still looks okay nothing insane uh but Moving forward now, I'm looking for a little bit of interaction here because we have all creatures so far in a pretty mediocre blue-green shell, I must say, but I mean, the deck is fine. Moving on to this pack, we have Get a Leg Up. Like I said, I wanted tricks, and this is a good trick to have in the deck, so very, very happy with that. Had we continued kind of going down the, the route of taking white cards, even though white and red seem really, really cut off, the person passing to us is almost certainly in red-white. Um, I'm going to take the get a leg up here. There's a novice inspector, which is the other best card in this pack. And that's basically it from this pack. But very, very happy with get a leg up. That's a premium, premium uh, interactive spell to put into your deck. And moving into this pack, we have uh, out cold. I'm a big fan of out cold as well. Uh, usually this is the type of card that comes later sometimes, but kind of like get a leg up. It's a card that you get late. But you shouldn't be too upset taking early only because I think the card is very good, right? It's like it's one of those cards where the card is very good, but you get it later than you probably should. I'm going to take the Alcold here as another piece of great interaction. Escape Tunnel is another option here. But we already have two pieces of fixing in the Nervous Gardener and the Panther. And we don't have anything worth splashing yet. And we want interaction. So I'll take the Alcold for our deck. And move forward with, uh, yeah, Nervous Gardener. Let's do that. It's another two drop here, so our curve's looking pretty good. Four two mana cards. Uh, you've heard me say before, but I'm not super impressed with Culvert Ambusher. I think it's just fine. Uh, Unauthorized Exit is a decent piece of interaction. I don't really like playing more than one copy of this card, but I am pretty happy playing the first copy of Unauthorized Exits in my blue green decks. And Dramatic Accusation is also just kind of a filler removal spell. Um, Anytime there's a person of interest, of course, I'm going to bring it up. Great, great creature. But let's go ahead and take Nervous Gardener out of this pack and move on. Now we have this pack. We have Fanatical Strength as a decent combat trick. I think I'm just going to take Topiary Panther here, though. I do like Fanatical Strength. Fairy Snoop and Automaton are okay, but we have in, uh, a decent number of cheap things already. And Topiary Panther is just perfect in these blue-green decks because... Having multiple copies of this makes both your Bite Down on Crime and V2Gazi Inspector that much better. And in the late game, when you do have too much mana, because you have all these Nervous Gardeners, you can just slam it as a 6-5 Trampler. So I think I'm going to just take the Panther here. And this really means that we can splash for anything, right? We have double Nervous Gardener and double Topiary Panther. So really, really happy to splash any bomb that we see. Not really interested in playing a second copy of Rubble Belt Maverick here. And like I said... Kind of in the need for some number of combat tricks. I don't love Airtight Alibi. I like it less than Fanatical Strength and Get a Leg Up. But given that we only have two spells right now, I'll take it. 
And here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and take Hedge Maze. I love, I love the Surveil Lands. This is on color for both. Gravestone Strider can be nice if you lack mana fixing. It's a two drop as well. But given that we have double Nervous Gardener, double Panther, don't think we need to take it. And besides, Hedge Mage is also mana fixing, right? It gives you the two colors, so it makes it less of a cost to play a Mountain for a Torch to Witness or what have you. Moving on to this pack, pretty unplayable pack here. Uh, I guess I'll take a criminologist if I get like a detective satchel or multiple maybe I can end up putting this in my deck but not really interested in play it here I'll take a hotshot investigators as an up, another top end threat to play although don't really want to play it if I can help it I really don't like this card in general here I'll take a sanitation automaton just to have another two drop this is not a case of the filch falcon deck case of the filch falcon is definitely a card that's good in the blue red deck but happy enough picking up another two I'll take another airtight alibi. Hopefully I don't have to play a second copy. Now I'll take the unauthorized exit. And I think we're probably in the right seat here, but we're just not really getting the power. You know, we're looking for cards like Repulsive Mutation, um, cards along those lines to play for our deck. This is an interesting pack because there's an Unyielding Gatekeeper, which is a very good card. The question is, is it so much more powerful that I should consider splashing it over taking something like a Loxodon Eavesdropper. At this point, with five twos, with five twos, I think I want to take the Eavesdropper over the Nervous Gardener. We have enough fixing already, so I just want a card that just generates me value. So I'm going to stay on color here and just take the Eavesdropper over the Gatekeeper here. I'm not entirely sure if that's correct, but we can just end up drafting more of a tempo or just straight up blue green deck. There's nothing wrong, by the way, just drafting two colors. There's nothing wrong with it. And here I'm just going to take an out cold. Sure, we can splash a galvanize, but out cold is arguably better and it doesn't make us um, go out of our way to play a card in another color. There's also drag the canal, but part of the strength of this card is the fact that you can also play it turn two just to make a 2-2. Two -two. And we don't have that as an option. When I want to splash, I want for I want to splash for something that has a great impact at, at all points in the game. Galvanize is that card, but I'm happy just taking out cold here and leaving my options open for a potential splash here if I absolutely need to. And now we might do it here. There's a makeshift binding in the pack. I don't really care for a second copy of the Crime Stopper Sprite. This is a case where I do think the power level difference of the cards is high enough where I'd rather just take the makeshift binding. This is also a deck that's not necessarily going wide enough where Case of the Gateway Express is better than makeshift binding. I think I'd rather take the makeshift binding here. All right, so that's our splash. And like I said, I mean, we have, with double Topiary Panther and a Nervous Gardener, one Plains is totally fine. I know I'm just going on and on and on, but that's because I'm trying to contain my excitement from the rare in this pack, Urgent Necropsy. Now this is the type of card that you splash for. This card is amazing. This card is amazing. We have double Panther, which gives you food. And more often than not, you can get a two for one with this. I've been three for one with uh, against this card as well. Oftentimes you can get a clue, a random artifact. I mean, the most common thing is you get an artifact and a creature. But if you're playing against a white deck, you get to take a makeshift binding, what have you. Very, very happy to get Urgent Necropsy. We can probably play a Forest, maybe not even play a Plains for the makeshift binding, depending how the rest of our deck ends up. Here, I'm going to take Gadget Technician, completely fine creature here to put into our deck. I think I'd rather have that over Crime Stopper Sprite number two or Sanitation Automaton number two. All right, moving, moving on, we have Vengeful Creeper just to fill out the rest of our deck. I do love me a Vengeful Creeper. I always like having one copy of this in my green decks just to have a nice way to uh, deal with enchantments and artifacts. And this is a miss of a pack. Uh, I could pick... A oh, reasonable doubt is fine. You can play this if you need another two. And I'll put, in, put it in here as a potential option. Fairy Snoop is another just fine three mana card to play. Not interested in splashing Extract the Confession. I'll take the Sample Collector here, but might not play that as well. Here there's a Cease and Desist, and I might actually play this card, right? Because if we want to um, collect evidence, this is definitely a, a nice card. It's an eight mana card to collect evidence with. It cycles, it draws you a card. It can potentially be playable here. Don't think I, this is a day went this way type of deck. I think we have enough fixing in our colors. But let's see how this deck will end up looking. 
We did miss out on a couple of playables early, so might have to play some fillers here. We'll see how things go. Certainly one swamp, one plains. If we do anything, no mountains. And then like at least nine green sources and then nine, 10, 15, and then one more here. So this gives us seven blue, nine green, and then one of each. Yeah, that seems good. All right, let's figure out the cuts for this deck. Like I said, I don't think I want to play They Went This Way. Probably don't want a second copy of Airtight Alibi. This is eight spells. And then let's take a look at our creatures. Can cut Hotshot Investigators. And yeah, I'm going to cut the Cease and Desist. I, I'm splashing for Makeshift Binding. Part of what makes this card awesome is if you can actually leverage the um, Destroy All Artifacts and Enchantments Clause. But, um, you know, I talk about, I already have the two Topiary Panthers. And um, it is a cost to just put two mana gain two draw card in your deck. Especially. This is the type of deck where I can actually see myself tempoing my opponents out, right? You can just curve out here with double out cold and kill your opponents that way. We do need one cut here. And I think it's just going to be the counter spell. I can't really loot it away. I don't really want to go down to 14 creatures. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, this is 16 creatures, actually. I like 16 creatures, too. And the Rumble Ball Maverick seems like it could be useful enough here. And I kind of like all my other spells. I suppose it could be Airtight Alibi, but I do like having an extra trick. So yeah, let's go ahead and just cut the Reasonable Doubt from this deck and uh, try this out. Okay, opponent on the play. We drew the Necropsy, which is great. Oh, I need to check change my... I don't know. I, I have... I, I don't know what land options are good. I changed my planes. This one looked kind of cool. There was like a rainbow on it <laughs> with like the weather light. Uh, all right. Anyways. Ooh, they have double Rubble Belt Maverick. Uh, do I want to bin this? It doesn't seem bad. I guess I'll keep it. I mean, it's just like a decent creature. I don't know. I don't know if I'm looking for something better necessarily, right? Oh, Evidence Examiner, okay. Sanitation Automaton. Although I guess I do want like one more land. I like that card as well. Maybe I should have been the um, Gadget Technician. I have this Nervous Gardener though. All right, so nice one, two, three here from the opponent. Now, bidding these four drops does make the Necropsy better, so that's something else to consider. Man, getting Valley with Evidence Examiner this early does not feel great for me. We'll keep the Automaton back here to block the Evidence Examiner and Projector Inspector. We'll flip over the Nervous Gardener and go get a Swamp and then play a Face Down Creature. If they kill my Nervous Gardener, that could be bad. Yeah, I think maybe I'm, I was supposed to bend this uh, Gadget Technician. Easy block. I can't imagine they want this trade. Wow. I, I, like, why, why not just use the Rubble Belt Maverick on it, right? Because then I'd have to double block. It's interesting. All right, so the sample collector is going to be able to get in for a good amount here. Um, so what are my best options? I can use out cold and then urgent necropsy to kill two things. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. Another way to preserve my life total would be to just get a Swamp and f play a face-up Fairy Snoop. And lose a little bit of value in the process. I'm a sucker for value, though. I, I, I don't think... I, I think my body would just physically be in pain if I did that. 
All right. Sorry. It's, it's just not an option. It's just not even an option. I just can't do it. Now, the nice thing about Out Cold would have been um, I just get to slow down everything that they're trying to do here with Evidence Examiner and Sample Collector. I guess it's a good sign that they're doing that. That means there's just going to be a little bit less pressure on us. I can double block Sample Collector. I don't know how risky that is. With Island Swamp Up, it's okay. With Forest Up, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more risky. But this combination is quite strong. So they might just choose not to attack. We'll see. Actually, what they can do is use Rubble Belt Maverick on Sample Collector. Yeah, this makes sense. And then uh, attack and then turn it into a 4 or 5. Yeah. In which case, we can bounce this and they lose two of the counters. Yeah. No, but that's uh, really good sequencing from our opponent. So playing the face-up snoop would have not even been that good. And they're getting a lot of value out of this evidence examiner. Alright, let's go and get a swamp. Don't think I'm interested in urgent necropsy just yet. I think we just... Um Play this face down and pass. We could represent the triple block now. <laughs> at, at some point. At some point. What You know what I need though? I need my opponent to play like a granite witness or something. I mean, the way I see it is I can go for the triple block. And just see what they do. And if they have a combat trick, I can bounce it. But I guess if they don't have a combat trick, what am, then what do I do? I just lose two of my face down cards. That seems pretty bad. Um, I can I can flip up Gadget Technician and just double block Gadget Technician plus Nervous Gardener. And then if they have a combat trick there, it's not so bad. Or I can just bounce Sample Collector. That's That's the other option. Okay, so they're not attacking. Man, they generate a lot of clues. It's going to be really, really tough here to um, to beat them. Just, just It's going to be tough, rather, sorry, to uh, fight through all the card draw. They're just going to be up so many cards here against us. Here, I think they're going to crack their clue and have the eavesdropper and sample collector as potential options here. I don't know that they attack into six open mana, though. But you know what? It's still, like, I don't know that I can necessarily take that risk. I think it's still probably good here to cast out cold on the eavesdropper and sample collector just to get something going. Like I need to draw I need to draw threats of my own, right? This also puts a lot of permanence into our this puts a four mana card into my graveyard, which then allows me to cast a bigger urgent necropsy potentially. Based on card, and they have double blue up, so it could be a granite witness. I'm hoping or gadget technician. They're both possibilities here. For me, I'm not actually sure. Which, I'm not actually sure um, which creature I need to kill here. You know what I mean? Let's get aggressive. With this much mana, it's really hard for them to block the face down card. So I'd rather just not flip it up here and try to get in for maximum damage. Okay. That's it. Okay. And then we can play... 
a sample collector and pass. And we can necropsy for six still. Oh, okay, so they kept up two blue, but it wasn't something worth flipping up. Okay. I can use unauthorized exit here as a tempo play if they attack me with the face down card. They have access to a lot of mana. We got in we, we were able to get in for some damage. I mean it might just be correct to just kill sample collector. Right, nothing there. What on earth? What on earth? Out cold? It's some way to deal with my sample collector. I guess. Lost in the maze. Interesting. Well, that's really, really good. Wow. The problem is I can't kill that and their creatures with the necropsy. That's crazy. Well, you know, I can do it on their turn when they untap. But yeah, they get to tap down my entire team. That's very good. Okay. Let's lift this up. Four, okay. Um, we have six, so we can kill Lost in the Maze plus Sample Collector. And I guess I'll play this Eavesdropper. Choose not to attack. That seems like the best course of action here. I don't know what else they can do. Fairy Snoop, okay. I wonder if I should be kill if I should have killed the permanents in response to this because they can find a counter spell. Wow. Three Rubble Belt Mavericks? That is, that is a lot of Rubble Belt Mavericks. I probably... I definitely don't give it the respect that it deserves, probably. That is a lot of Rubble Belt Mavericks, though. Oh, so I can wait till they make a clue, and I can target the clue. It's kind of a free roll. With the Evidence Examiner, although I don't think they're going to exile. Okay, so that's a large Fairy Snoop. Let's see if they use this ability. They don't. And yeah, let's go ahead and kill. Submit zero. Yeah, I think I want to kill that. Okay. Now we just need to deal with this fairy snoop, which is very tough to attack through. Okay. I I mean, I guess they they must have something here. I don't know what it can be though, like a slice. Uh, okay, I I don't I didn't understand that at all. Why did they attack? Uh all right. What is our white for? Oh, uh binding. And we used our black Spell. So let's just crack this. Out cold would be phenomenal. Okay, that is not an out cold. 
Now, we could just go for just like a, a crazy tempo play here. They're at 14 life. Let's see. You know, I actually like it. Let's get another land here to thin out our deck. Let's bounce Fairy Snoop. Sure. Let's attack. And um, collect Evidence 3. And put a counter on. Gadget Technician, I guess? Yeah. I don't know that this Evidence Examiner was a good play. I'm glad they blocked like that, though. Okay. I mean, they're at two. We went for Tempo. Next turn, we can go Evidence Examiner, crack. Oh, yes. Woo. We beat the Lost in the Maze and, and all the evidence collection shenanigans. Urgent Necropsy. Urgent Necropsy. Getting it done. All right. 1-0. Still rank 3. All right. Opponent on the play. We have a 2-drop and some 3s. I mean, we need some lands, but I got a 2-drop on the draw. I can't, I'm not really mulliganing this. Turn 2 Evidence Examiner. Oh... Another blue-green deck. Big, big surprise. Do we trade? I don't think so. Oh. They, okay, like... What, 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 what is this? They must be... Okay, they must be green-white splash blue. That's what makes sense to me. I dare you. They're not going to block. I think I'm going to face down Gadget Technician here. Just because uh, Vengeful Creeper, I can just play it face up turn 5, which is fine. Whereas I don't really ever have the option of turning this face up. If they block with their 2-2 token... They're probably just thinking, what's like the worst thing that can happen if they block with their 2-2 token? And the thing is, it makes sense for them to do that block. Airtight Alibi is like the card is the only card that really destroys them from that spot. But they chose not to block. They're like, why would he attack me? Like if I fanatical strength ex evidence examiner, I think they want that to happen, right? So it's like, what could it be? All right, bite down on crime. And here, oh, they can collect evidence too. Okay. They had such a good follow-up. Although they could have bite down on crime if I used the airtight alibi, so I'm not too sad about this. Yeah, let's just minimize some damage here. And let's go ahead and use Crime Stopper Sprite. Tap down the evidence examiner. And yeah, I mean, they have the value hand. All of our opponents are getting way more value off their evidence examiner than I am. And I am not happy about it. But such is life. Such is life. Our hand is now kind of a... Oh, coerced to kill? It's kind of an aggressive hand now, right? We have Vengeful Creeper with a combat trick and an out cold. And we have a flyer in play. So I, I believe that's going to be my game plan. I, th I think I want to face up this Vengeful Creeper. It's just such a huge creature in play. And they don't have any enchantments right now, so let's just do it. Now, this is obviously very bad if they have Coerce to kill, but given that I feel like my opponent's far ahead of me on resources, I just need to put the most, like, pound for pound, the most power and toughness that I can into, and certainly not blocking this face down card. It's probably a crowd control warden. All right, so they're going to try to get aggro here, and so are we. They're not blocking. I doubt they're blocking. 
Here's my question. Do I use Airtight Alibi as a combat trick? Or do I just tap down to these two face, face down cards? I think I just tap down to two face down cards, honestly. They're the biggest question marks. I know this can get in for a good amount. But um, if they choose not to block and attack with everything, I have a lethal attack. I would not like to pay the ward. Wow, they're getting aggro. Okay. Let's hope they don't have an out cold of their own. Nervous Gardener, okay. In the middle of attacks, it's really important to get that land while the before the damage hits, you know what I mean? It's just like, you gotta send that message. Let's hope they don't have a torch, but they're playing all the colors. Probably a torch. Nope, just a V2 Gazi Inspector, okay? Oh, with no evidence, sure. All right, if we can find a bounce spell for this, but they do have three mana up with two cards in hand. I'm shocked they weren't able to play it, play something there. Wow, that is so tempting. Oh my goodness, that is so tempting. But with three mana up, it just seems so unlikely that this is going to work. I think I'd rather just attack with Vengeful Creeper. Keep this back because I'm still at I'm at 12 and they can still attack with these creatures. Alright. The thing is these uh these two creatures are, are still locked down. We st we still have some blockers. Let's see what they have. Alright, they had lightning helix. I don't want them to gain life here. All right, so I'm glad I didn't go for it. That's a great feeling. They're green, white, splashing evidence examiner and lightning helix. They did go deep. Locks it on eavesdropper. I don't mind that one. Okay, they're dead. Whew. All right. Yeah, they had some good cards. They had some good cards. We're going to get you out of here real quick. Thank you very much. All right. Airtight Alibi, getting in there, getting in there. Oh. We did it! We did it! Oh my gosh! We finally got there! We finally got there, we're ranked two! That's awesome. We hit rank two. We hit rank two. There's only one person left. There is only one person left. We're two and oh. Eakin, I'm coming for you. I don't know how big the lead is, but we are now rank number two. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. Especially because our deck isn't like awesome or anything. And being able to snatch wins with, uh, in the fashion that we're doing feels great. Out cold, doing a lot of work, using our combat tricks, being careful, uh, not running into the, the trick that they could have with three mana up or going for the win there. Because if we go for the win there, we lose that game. We lose that game. All right, ring two gamer here. Uh, uh, no big deal. Playing against Turbo Ninja. We are on the play. We have three forests with a Nervous Gardener, Get a Leg Up, Necropsy, and Makeshift Binding. I guess I'll keep because I have this Nervous uh, Gardener. But it's weird. I have both splash cards in my hand. So un unclear what I need to get here as far as lands. Um... I, yeah, I, I really don't know. Planes or Swamp? Planes or Swamp? Sharp-eyed rookie. Okay. I'm going to get a Planes. Oh, I can get both. But let's... Yeah, let's flip this up. I'm going to just kill the Sharp-eyed rookie. Actually, I should attack first. They're not going to block. But, you know, it's worth a shot, right? Worth a shot. I don't want them to get value off of that card. And Topiary Panther plus Necropsy is nice. Although I might not do it if I don't... Oh, wow. They just kept up two, four mana. Okay, drawing the island was also great. How do you not have a play? 
This must be a sweeper, right? It must be like Swamp Devious Wrath thing. I don't know. Or I, I suppose it's just a hand of all removal. Okay. Get a leg up. Does not do anything. All right. Coerce to kill on locks it on eavesdropper is annoying. Um, hmm. I can, I can kill the coerced. Is that worth it? It seems kind of weak, right? Killing coerced to kill to get my eavesdropper back. Like I want to be able to get back another thing. So let's just crack a clue here and see if there's just another good play here. Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll just play gadget technician here. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll trade here if you want. All right, mortuary for them. Can't flip this gadget technician. Wow, they've been crowd control warden, so they're working with a lot of action. Interesting. All righty. I don't know what they have. This is just so... I mean... It could, I guess it could be a sweeper. It could be mutation, I guess. Yeah, mutation for three. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a good thing. That's actually, like, let's look at that as a good thing. Because, um, because that allows us to um, kill the coerced. And now the mute Hellion is in the graveyard. So if I ch if I cycle this Panther, that's 13. So if they finally play a creature here, I can actually kill the creature plus coerced. What what is going on here with with our opponent? Do do you just have 17 repulsive mutations? Like what's happening here? The thing is I want to keep this kind of as a surprise. I can't really attack them. Whatever. I mean, we're just going to play Drago, I guess. This makes it really obvious, but like it's it's you can't really tell that somebody has urgent necropsy really, so I I want to be able to cast this end of turn, so. Let's see what they do. Oh, you know what it feels like a this feels like a doppelganger type of game, right? Doesn't it? All right, well, at least I can make a Thopter now. <laughs> I just feel like um, with the Necropsy, given this board, I should definitely go for the two for one. So I'm just going to play it patiently. You know what I mean? Uh, that's probably worth it. I don't know. You know, I'm still just going to wait. They have too many cards in hand. I'm going to wait and just try to navigate this game as, well, as well as I can against Counter Magic. And like if they flip this up at some point, that's when I can blow them out. Yep. Let's play sample collector. Plenty of samples to collect. What do you have, Turbo Ninja? <laughs> They're not even flipping over their face down cards. Like, I, I don't get it. God, what do you have? What on earth do you have? Five cards in hand is wild. We'll take a 6-5 Trampler. Don't have a good attack here. Yep. All 
I wonder if I attack with the Rumble Boat Maverick so that I can put a counter on my Thopter to start getting into town, start start attacking. Nah. You're going to flip over any of your cards, friend? Is that something you're interested in doing? Sure. So they can mutation for four and I have to pay eight. So I can do that. So in risk, but if they do it for, so end of turn when they crack their clue, I'm going to kill the coerce to kill and the whip cracker, I, I guess. I mean, honestly, I could go for an end of turn here. Is that crazy? And if they have a counter spell of some sort, maybe I can blow them out with get a leg up. No. Hey, hold on. This one's pretty big. Yeah, let's, let's just untap. Okay. All right, I'm going to just do it. Okay, let's... Uh, artifact. Creature. Enchantment. Seven. We can pay, we can pay Repulsive Mutation here. Because they, the, their biggest creature... Boom. And they didn't crack their clue. That's interesting. Ah. <sighs> How do we want to attack? Let's attack with everything. Uh, who do we want to pump? We'll pump you. All right. Show me what you've been working with. Oh, that's it? That's the big finish? I was expecting more. We'll see. <laughs> I think this is going to be lethal with get a leg up. I, this was just the strangest game. I just like, how do you, how do they have five cards in hand still? You know what I mean? Like, how is just that possible? So they take two, three trample there and, and I just target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter how I do this. Plus six, plus six. Yeah. Oh, no, it doesn't give a trample. What am I doing? Woo, that would have been bad. So they take one, two, three, plus six. Yeah, yeah. I could have targeted my panther too. Woo, all right. That was a close one. What, what do they have? Just, why, why wouldn't you flip up the crocodiles? Like, if, by not flipping the croc, the, the thing is they were playing kind of scared the whole time. So I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out their thought process. I'm not saying anything bad about necessarily what, what they did. I think they were trying to keep up repul like repulsive mutation number two. That's the only thing that makes sense. The entire game, right? That's the only reason why you would do something like that. Not fl flipping up your crocodiles. Like when you have face down cards, I know you want to ambush people by flipping them up later, but 90% of the time, it's better to just use your mana and flip them up um, just to keep adding power and toughness to your board. Especially when you play against somebody who might be able to sniff something out like that. All right, we're going to keep this hand. Turn to Automaton. Another Evidence Collector? No. Turn to Nervous Gardener. So they have maybe an aggressive hand. We'll see. Going to match them with Automaton. I'm going to keep the Eavesdropper, though. Very, very good creature here. Happily block. Let's play the Snoop. It's a little bit awkward, but I just think this eavesdropper is just a very good creature in this particular matchup. So do I block here? Sure. It's probably Nervous Gardener, number two or something. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not flipping this fairy Snoop up anytime soon. So I'd rather just keep pace with what they're doing here. Would really love to just draw a land to naturally play the eavesdropper. Okay, we did. Very, very fortunate. Because next turn we can cycle the panther and then still collect evidence on the sprite, which is nice. If they hit land number five, then I really don't want to block. Because that's a representing crocodile mana. Yeah, so they, if they attack me with this one, I'm going to take it. Rubble Belt Maverick. Okay. Man, everybody just... How many Rubble Belt Mavericks are you supposed to play in these blue-green decks? Like, th 
I'm averaging 2.5. My opponent's decks. I don't ever want like two. Oh, that's a good one. All right. How do we want to do this? Um, all right. Very happy with that. I actually think I'm going to pass here. I want to either cycle the panther or use unauthorized exit when they attack me with everything and try to flip something over. I can use that as a tempo play. Oh, they have a good deck. Just all the Nervous Gardeners and Rubble Belt Mavericks. So this face down card is likely to be something big just because unless they have four Nervous Gardeners. But let's hope they can play like, um, you know, an artifact or an enchantment so that I can get more, uh, additional value out of this. Nick. The thing is, I don't. you don't need to be... It is not, in fact, urgent. You, you can you can wait on this, right? You can just choose to be a little more patient here. All right, I'll trade three threes. What is this? What are you? This is like exit specialist? What are you? Let's just tap down this face down card for now. Oh, could be another mutation. Blah. Okay. Oh, you know what this... No, it could be Flourishing Bloomkin, but they would have attacked, right? If it's a Flourishing Bloomkin. So it's not a five mana face up card. It could be... No... It could be, I don't know if it's a Rift Burst Hellion either because they would have just not put a plus one plus one counter here and attack with Rift Burst Hellion. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss for what it can be here. All right, so we can kill Surveillance Monitor plus the Thopter. Is that worth it? I don't know. I'm going to still wait. I'm going to attack with this Sprite and then I'm just going to use Alcold for now just to keep digging for answers. But we are getting a little flooded here. Would like to find just a random large monster. All right, out cold. Not paying for the ward. Okay. Evidence examiner would be a great draw. Oh, airtight alibi is interesting. Certainly attacking here. Then one, two, three. I'll play this face down. Pass. Nope. Technician was a totally fine draw here. So they have these two creatures that are still locked down, and then this face down card. Is it Exit Specialist? Kind of feels like it. It is Exit Specialist! <laughs> so we can flip this up and make a... I can, I can airtight alibi this, but it doesn't seem worth it. I'd rather just make another... Like, I don't mind that they bounce this. It's not like I have a lot to do with my mana. So, like, go ahead and bounce it. And, uh... Like, I'm okay with that. I'll just make another Thopter. Here, I'll trade if necessary. Or I can use Airtight Alibi. We'll see. But this also, these Thopters are also great at blocking the Specialist. Let's see what they do. If they flip over this giant face down card, I might want to just bounce it here for tempo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this easy bounce. Good tempo. And Nervous Gardener. Don't think I want that. Like it's a body, but the body is just not that relevant here, right? 
I'd rather just have any number of things over that. I think I will play this land because I can flip up my creature and cast Urgent Necropsy. I'm going to need to use the save the Necropsy for the Rift Burst Hellion when it flips up and tries to eat my sprite. Right now, I have more than enough evidence to collect to kill multiple things. They have a lot more cards in hand than we do. So a lot of what a lot of our game plan just hinges on our flyers getting there. I mean, technically speaking, I could use Airtight Alibi to try to get in for a two-turn clock here. I can use the Alibi to hit with my Sprite Thopter for five and then five again. That is kind of an all-in play, though. All right. So I don't think I like it. All right, let's play the Maverick, see what we hit. Do I want to collect samples? It's like a 3-4 when it attacks. Sure. You can tell I really love that choice. Like, you can, you can feel it, right? That was just pure love. All right, we pass. I want them to make something where I can get more value off of this urgent necropsy. <laughs> I don't think I will, but like they're going to probably keep up six mana here. Oh, sure. So now I can kill, huh? This is super interesting because that's probably a Rift Burst thing, but now I can kill... How much do I have to exile? More than enough, right? I can kill Surveillance Monitor and the Coerce to kill. Actually, I can kill the Face Down card. I can kill the Face Down card and Coerce to kill and then use Gadget Technician to potentially block. No, but that, that doesn't play around uh, Repulsive Mutation. Yeah, I want to play around Repulsive. All right, let's... Um, yeah, let's kill the monitor and the enchantment. Collect evidence nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That was a good turn for us. Very, very good turn for us. Yep. I guess let's put a counter on this flyer. And then we can just attack with everything. I'm going to save this Urtight Alibi still. And then we have... That's the Hellion. And we have three attackers here. That are all lethal with this Urtight Alibi. So we'll see how this goes. Woo! Wow, we are just playing nothing but Soul Tie Mirrors. And we are getting there. Urgent Necropsy doing so much work. That was the... I mean, that urgent necropsy was insane, right? We killed Coerce to kill a creature and then just obliterated their board because it totally ruined combat. <sighs> Still number two. Still number two. Playing against another uh, top, top ranked player here in Dog. This is a bit of a slow hand. I think I'm going to keep though because I have literally all my colors. I can use the Panther to get a Swamp. And then I just have a bunch of face down cards, but I can definitely get run over if my opponent's playing Boros. And this isn't the most powerful hand, but I mean, I, I don't play a one drop, please. Okay, thank you. Like I said, I don't feel good about this hand, I, but I feel like it's a keep. Oh, they drew that turn too? All right, let's mute them. War Leader's Call. Yeah, that's really good. All right, so let's go get the Swamp. Yeah, War Leader's Call is insane. Hopefully we can draw a Necropsy. Um, 
Let's play the Technician just because uh, we can flip this up pretty soon. I don't want to play the Creeper yet until I can actually flip it up. So turn 5, I think I'm going to play this face down. Uh, turn 4, I believe my opponent's going to play something here. So, something big. So I believe I'm going to go for Out Cold on turn 4. I'm basically trying to survive so I can get this War Leader's Call off the ba battlefield. Oh yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were bound to run into just like, you know, an insane deck. And that is what we're running up against right now. So, yeah, we're going to tap down these two 3-3s three threes and hold the fort. Next turn, we have a pretty good play. We can flip up the Gadget Technician and play Vengeful Creeper face down. Which is fine. We're going to take another two here. I, I think we have like a 5% chance of winning this. Their hand has to be like all lands or something. But we will continue fighting. Like I said, urgent necropsy. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this is not. Urgent necropsy. Like we need urgent necropsy like now. Okay, you know. It's not the worst. Oh man. They also didn't play a land that that the turn means meaning that they have literally they have three spells in hand here. Oof. Yeah, this one's rough. This one's rough, friends. Um I I I don't even think I can win if I kill this war leader's call. Right? It's it, it's kind of we're kind of on the urgent necropsy or bust plan. Just kind of hoping they don't have a combat trick, even though we know they have two cards in hand. And I'm going to bounce this token. This, like, we're so behind. I'm just playing desperate. Because we're looking for urgent necropsy here. Oh, they're going for the kill. Okay. They must have a shock. Is that a shock or a burn spell? No. Um, Let's, uh... Crack this clue, I guess. All right. It's okay. Th those are losses where you're just like, you were on the play and you played War Leader's Call into Double Person of Interest. Like, that's just unbeatable. So, um, don't need to feel bad about that one. Them's the beats. Let's keep it going. Four and one. All right, let's get let's let's go first. No, no first. Okay, that's fine. This hand is great. Island, double forest, makeshift binding, nervous gardener, vengeful creeper, and panther. So the our mana is perfect. And if our opponents, even if our opponents playing like an aggressive boros deck, we can run out the gardener turn two here because we have the panther. I mean, I'd rather not, but they they went turn one thundering falls. That doesn't mean anything in this format, though, because they followed that up with the planes. Who knows what it can be? Um, yeah, I'm not playing out this Nervous Gardener. That's not going to be my route to victory. I'm just going to go ahead and fetch a planes here with the Panther. Jeez. Turn three, Steam Core Scholar. Very good. Probably, oh no, I can I can freeze it. Yeah, that's that's my plan. We're going to go ahead and fetch a planes here with the panther and then turn three, we'll play Crime Stopper Sprite, collect evidence and uh, freeze the scholar for a turn. They discarded Lightning Helix. Oof, their hand must be loaded. We are in for a fight here, folks. We are in here for a fight. And our hand is just a lot of mana sources, but it's okay. All right, escape tunnel, probably a face down card, and then we can just go Nervous Gardener. The question is whether or not I want to attack. Hmm. Probably. Well, hmm. Yeah, probably. They discarded Lightning Helix. That tells me they probably have another removal spell anyways. So there's a non-zero chance that they just go ahead and find some way to kill the Sprite and then attack with the Scholar. 
So I'd rather just get in for the damage, knowing like when I know that I can. And I played a Nervous Gardener here because I can't flip up the Creeper next turn anyways. And there's a non-zero chance that I just play another face-up Creeper next turn for mana efficiency purposes. It looks like they're a base blue-white deck, splashing red. So just blue-white detectives. Although against blue-white detectives, I mean, keeping the Vengeful Creeper can still be really good. Oh, never mind. They are going really deep. Why am I surprised these days? Just everybody just like, you know, who cares? I'll just play all the colors. Let's... Here, they're, they're, they're good. now they're going to have the mind control card, right? Like, for sure. Let's go ahead and get our swamp. I'm going to attack. This is just the only thing I don't know about. They could also have, like, a reasonable doubt. And maybe I want to kill Case of the Shattered Pact. I don't know. Like, what if they have a killer among us? And I don't have anything else to do with my mana. All right, let's just do it. I don't know why I auto... I should be more careful tapping my mana here. It's a Gravestone Strider. Hey, we got some value. What on earth? Until end of turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus zero gains. When this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw cards equal to its toughness and can attack as though it... Okay. What the heck? <laughs> How did... All right. You know what? I'm just not even going to... I'm just not going to question things. <sighs> okay. Well, I don't think there's an urgency here to, fl uh, to kill the Gravestone Strider. I don't have urgency to kill the Gravestone Strider. So, let's attack. I'm going to remove this, I think. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, if they target their Steam Core Scholar or something, it's kind of ridiculous. And it's a 215, like it is a ginormous blocker. So, all right. So definitely not interested in attacking this turn when they have all this mana up. So I'm just going to pass. This could be like a, I guess if it's a Rift Burst Hellion. No, I can't uh, airtight alibi. So we'll just, we'll just chill this turn. I think it's a Rift Burst Hellion. Actually, no. Why would you play that in your blue white deck? I have no idea what it is. I'm not going to pretend to even figure out what it is. Okay, it's a Rift Burst Hellion. A a anything goes. Maybe, the, you know what? I they're green-white splashing Steam Core Scholar. We're just, we're updating things as it goes, okay? That's what we're doing. So blue, red, green. They're looking at their Case of the Shattered Pact. It's too much of a beating here if I double block and flip this and they have a trick. So I'm just going to take six. Yep. Okay. I'm just going to kill the creature. Like, this actually has an impact on the board. Whereas this one, like, yeah, if you get a black and white permanent to play, good job, right? That's that's the way I'm going to look at it here. Um, do I want to attack with the Crime Stopper sprite? Yeah. So if this is like a crowd control warden or an undercover crocodile, we have the alibi, which is nice. Oh, it's just a nervous gardener? Okay. I'm okay with that. So we have two tricks available to us. Being the first person to have to use unauthorized alibi, or sorry, airtight alibi is kind of unfortunate, but I think I'm going to go for it here. Okay, they're getting uh, a value land here. Um, I'm like when they, If they attack me with Rift Burst Hellion... I will target my Vengeful Creeper with Airtight Alibi. And then if they have some kind of a combat trick, then I can use Unauthorized Exit to bounce the Rift Burst Hellion. That is my plan. And they're at 10, so they got to be careful too. Here, I'll just take it. 
I could also bounce the Hellion as a tempo play. Been drawing a lot of lands here. We drew 10 of our lands. So they have three cards in hand. What if I bounce the Rift Burst Hellion here? Because it also get, lets me surveil. And then that lets me get in for a pretty big attack. And this was a pretty big man investment from them. So yeah, I'm going to do that. I sure hope they don't have a mutation for 75. Oh, I will keep that one. <laughs> that one I will keep. That That's good when you have too many lands, I'm just going to say. I don't think they want to go to one, but who knows what they have. All right, and I'm, I'm still going to play this creature here because this blocks the creeper, so I need three creatures in play to have this be lethal. If they play two creatures, I can still have this be lethal because they can block creeper and my face down card, and I can still use airtight alibi for the win. And of course, of course they had a wrath. Oh, that's sickening. That is absolutely sickening. I'm still happy with my decision there. Like I said, they're at six. It puts pressure on them. And the way that I lose is if they have like one of three rares in the set. So, but it is what it is. Jetson. All right. So they're going to go get Rift Burst Hellion here. Do I have another bounce spell? Bouncing that would be sick. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a good draw here. That's not great. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and get the land first. Thin out our deck. Oh, Hedge Maze actually. No, that's really good. Let's see if we can find something great. Gadget Technician. I really want to find Urgent Necropsy. But maybe this is still fine. It puts two things in play and I can chump with... Oh! Give me the Alcold. Alright, yeah, let's do this. So I can, I, can, I can chump the Rift Burst Hellion here. Oh, man. Okay. I, I don't think I'm going to main phase the out cold. It is kind of tempting, though. They probably want to just flip up this Rift Burst Hellion. I don't know. Wow. They have, how did you get three rare lands? I think they stipulation rare drafted. All right. All right, here we go. Let's put this here. Actually? No, 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 no. I definitely main phase out cold here. Oh, do they have do they have a removal spell? I can airtight alibi? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because the reason being is I have four, five, six, seven, I have ten mana. So I can out cold. I can out cold now, then draw a card, and then play the gadget technician. I don't know. They they, they paused there though. They paused, so it makes me want... Ooh, this is really close. They paused. No, let's, let's go for it. Now they have no choice but to use the remo removal spell. Unless they were just bluffing. They could have been bluffing. But it, it feels like they weren't. Yes! Whew. Keeping it tight. They need to draw something. I mean, this is just a lethal attack next turn. And we have that gadget technician next turn. All right, come on. Miss. Miss. I'll also accept something small to chump block with. All right, let's crack this clue. If you have a, if you top deck the removal spell, man, I'm going to be so sad. If you top deck the removal spell, I'm going to be so sad. I mean, it's something, right? Oh, it's just a chump blocker. Okay. Okay. Just a chump blocker. I mean, would really rather they just have nothing there, but us drawing the land there also wasn't great. But they're at one life. We have three lethal attackers. They need to miss this turn. 
They need to miss this turn. Please miss this turn. Please. Okay, you're at one life. Or I need to top deck something. Just miss one turn. One turn. I'm not going to block both. I'm just going to block one. Let's hope they just had a creature here. Because now we still have two lethal attackers if they have a creature to block with. Come on. Okay, it's a face down card. We don't know what it is. Oh, we drew another land. We only have one play. We only have one play. That doesn't... Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Like, you're playing this card in your deck? All right. This, you know what this is? And we're now rank three. You know what? The, that's just, th that game is just proof that even if you play well, it's magic, baby. There is randomness and you can still lose. So that is pretty heartbreaking. I'm not going to lie. I thought, I thought we did, we navigated that game quite well. And we left ourselves in lots of really great spots. But ultimately our opponent was able to draw out of it. I, I, God, are you kidding me? That antiquity card? Oh my gosh. Oh. That one, that one stings. Okay, four and two. Let's let's hope to win out. Man. That one though. Ooh, that one really hurts. Man, I wanna I wanna end at ring two. At least at least we got to touch ring two, right? At least we got to touch ring two. All right, this hand is okay. We have turn one Rubble Bolt Maverick into Sanitation Automaton, Automaton into Face Down Rift Burst Hellion with Get a Leg Up. Fine opening hand. Especially because our opponent did not go turn one Novice Inspector off the planes. Ooh. You know, I kind of want both. So we'll just keep it. We'll keep both. Look, just because it says surveil doesn't mean you always have to surveil, right? It's just like, you just curve out, you play all your things, it's still fine. I mean, it's not like these are my bombs, but how can I turn down land number four and then just everything else here? Uh, I might have been able to sneak in a, a point there. But I'm guaranteed to be able to do it next turn with get a leg up. I don't know. Maybe maybe I could. Yeah, you know, maybe I could have snuck in a damage there. All right. Well, turn two Somala Sentry into face down card is a problem. That's going to be tough. If they just pass, I just feel like we lose. Oh, man. That loss really stings. Okay. I don't want to attack into Museum Night Watch or um, Nervous Gardener or anything like that. Okay. It wasn't. That's good. Same thing, if they pass here, it's like, what, what can I do? I can't really attack them with my creatures. It's like a crowd control warden or anything along those lines. Ooh, that, that does make things interesting. Like, if it's a crowd control warden, it becomes a 6-6. Six, six. I can just use get a leg up to kill it. It's like the most obvious get a leg up ever, but what am I going to do? Yeah, I know they have a 2-4 sentry, but honestly, like just getting that crowd control warden off the battlefield and me being able to untap, keep the board clean, I think is worth it. I did 2-for-1 myself. I mean, this generates a clue. It's not too bad. It basically replaces itself. 
Great double block from the opponent, though, by the way. Great, great block. All right, they got the Rift Burst Hellion. Hopefully they're out of gas soon. Urgent Necropsy would be great for, for us. Okay, land there was super bad. I'm going to wait, though. I want to be able to... I think I can maybe pull off a situation where I can attack with the eavesdropper again. Another thing to keep in mind is if I bounce that Baird in the garden at some point, I can just get a 6-7 and use that as a surprise getcha for 6. Looks like they are basically down to a combat trick here, maybe. Which is something that we can manage because we have the unauthorized exit. What the heck? Galvanize. Interesting. I think I'm going to save it here. It just... <laughs> Locks on eavesdropper says ETB draw a card, right? Like how... You know, I can't turn that down. It's better than temporarily getting a 6-7, I feel. So if we draw land, that would be really nice. Oh, that's disgusting. You top that Culvert Ambusher. That's disgusting. I don't, I honestly, I actually don't even think that was worth it. Okay, of course they don't know that we have Nervous Gardener, but was that better than playing this face down Forcing Maverick to block and getting two plus one plus one counters? That seems better to me. I'd rather have the combat stats, honestly. But, 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 no, 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 no. But, but, they don't know what my face down card is, right? So it's, that's a thing. This is actually really good because now my gadget technician can be a 4-3. Oh, not having the swamp sucks. Oh, man. Yeah, them killing that nervous gardener is definitely very, very painful. All right, let's think here. They have one card in hand. I can tap these two and attack. No, I don't have the mana to do all the things that I want, unfortunately. Oh, wait. No, I do. Is that worth? I think that's worth. So what I want to do is outcall these two now, attack with these two, put a counter on my face down card, and the Sumala Sentry has to make a bad block. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, that's great. Okay, let's crack a clue. Hopefully we can find just any threat here would be great. I'll take it. They're at two. And we play a bubble smuggler. And this is looking very good now for us. They're not really in a position to attack us. And we have lethal on board. I might actually just end of turn crack this, just because both of these creatures eats my uh, eavesdropper anyways. So I might want to just have access to all the mana next turn. Uh, for example, like, I can flip this up and still play a 2-drop if I draw it. This one flies, which is nice. The thing is, so they're block... Well, okay, well, depending on what they play. This goes here, this goes here. Oh, Torch. Okay, that's very good. Oh, man. Okay, that's brutal. I think we're still looking okay. Wow, what a turn. What a turn for them. Yeah, I'm going to just crack here now. This, this having vigilance I don't think matters at all. Yep, and Alcold gets it done. All righty.
Whew. Okay, got the five. This should put us back to two. This should put us back to two. All right, we're two. Should I just drop? Just five and two, we're done. And just be like, hey, that's the end of the series here, folks. Couldn't beat Eakin, but we at least ended at number two. Of course, we're going to keep it going. Okay, Hand, two islands, two forest, nervous gardener, double eavesdropper. Um, they're on the play. How many die rolls have we lost in this one? I feel like we've been on the draw almost all these games. Like almost all of them? Island for the draw was not good. They went mountain plains, so that's not ideal. So I feel like this is definitely a game where I just have to play Nervous Gardener here face up to keep up with what they have. Never mind, I drew Rubble Belt Maverick. So I can play that to get in front of the automaton and we can shape our draws. Are both of these desirable? I think so. I'll keep both. They're both good. Neighborhood Guardian. No attacks from them. No attacks from us. Gonna be, t oh God, person of interest is so good. Do you remember that time when I said person of interest is a good magic card? Do you remember? Yeah, can, can confirm. And being on the draw against Boros with this in play, it's just like, it doesn't it just feel helpless? You just feel completely helpless. You're just like, all right, if they play a creature here, it's just, it's so bad. If they had a shock or a removal spell, they would have used it. All right. Inside source, yep, pump, pump everything. This might be a turn where we chump. This might be a turn where we chump. Depending on where you distribute the counters. Yep, let's block. Ugh, feels so bad. Okay, um... Do we just play Panther? I think we just play Panther. We just pass. This this is definitely a... If they d don't have anything to follow up here, we have a chance. They drew a land. If they don't attack... Okay. We have stabilized. We have stabilized. Um, hmm. I'm okay trading this eavesdropper for two things. Okay. I don't think it's time to use out cold just yet. And I'm going to play sample collector and I'm going to put a counter on it. All right. Building up a bigger board. Building up a bigger board slowly here. We survived the initial onslaught. They still don't have a great attack here. Oh, they can uh, put everything onto a detective, I guess? No, see, I don't, I don't know if you target that. We can block that one. That's not a detective. Unless they have something like the chase is on, I guess. Yeah, I, see, they should have... They should have... <laughs> they should have done something else. I, uh, well said, Paul. They should have done something else. So I, I don't have anything to collect evidence from here with the sample collector. I'm still trying to be pretty careful here. Actually, I can attack with this with the airtight alibi, right? Wow, they passed. Okay. If they pl draw planes for like out um, the chases on, that would be really bad. This, this is probably an out cold turn, actually. After they made a uh, bold no block like that. If they had um, on the job, I'm just looking. If they had on the job, 
uh, we could have blocked two things, four, eight, 12, if we, and then we tap two things, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. so it's not lethal. Question is, what do they want to target? We have Airtight Alibi. We also have Get a Leg Up. Uh, get a Leg Up's not going to get a ton. They have way too many creatures in play. All right, you know, Airtight Alibi has been so good, by the way, <laughs> for our deck. Like, it ha it's been way better than it has any business being. Right? Way better than it has any business being. Okay. All righty. All righty, all righty, all righty. We have seven mana. I can chant, I can cycle the panther to free something if I really wanted to. That also allows me to, oh no, but I, I want to do that too. Hmm. You know, honestly, I can just main phase out cold here, right? I feel like the game's just going to end very soon. If I main phase out cold, how bad is it for me? Because that allows me to uh, sample collect. Yeah, let's just do that. Woo! All right. Keeping it going. Keeping it going. That was an onslaught that I did not think we were going to defeat. I'm not going to lie. That was quite the start. They petered out. Like, that was one of those instances where if they have anything, right? Chase is on. On the job. Another binding. We're just dead. But they just ran out of gas. All right. This is for the trophy. We are 6-2 and two with our Simic deck. We are on the play, which is very, very nice. So this is what it feels like. Um, and we have an okay hand. We have um, Topiary Panther, Get a Leg Up, Rift Burst Talion, Crime Stopper Sprite with three lands. Turn two, we can channel, I keep saying channel. We can cycle the Panther and get Swamp or Plains. Hopefully we draw something that helps aid us in our decision here. Oh, we have a Nervous Gardener, so there's not even anything to think about. We just get one and then figure out the other one after. Playing against Black Red with uh, Sanitation Automaton here. I'm just going to go get Planes. I think the Makeshift Binding is more useful early. I can freeze this too. I think I will. Just to have a nice flyer in play. Get the tempo back. Next turn, we can play Nervous Gardener face down and go ahead and fetch our Swamp. Oh, okay. We drew the Necropsy. You know, the really nice thing about that is, uh, well, now I wish I didn't remove the Panther. There's nothing that really punishes me here. Unless it's Shady Informant. Oh, God. It's like the only card. All right, well. Yeah, I need to get a Swamp, though. All right, well, you know, okay. The way that I look at that is that was the worst possible situation. Yeah, that was really bad for us. We took less damage. And we, st we have uh, more fuel for our urgent necropsy, right? 
So let's just look at it that way. We have the Rift Burst Tellion. That can be a 6-7. If they use a removal spell, we can save it with Unauthorized Exit, giving us a little more food. And the nice thing is they have already have an artifact in play, so it's really likely that this Necropsy is going to get us a 2-for-1. Our life total is much higher, so we can afford to take some extra damage. If they play a face-down card, we can hit them for 6 if we want. Lamplight Phoenix. Ugh, that's annoying. Does this exile or destroy? It destroys? Yeah, that's not ideal. All right, Repeat Offender and Sanitation Automaton with two cards, okay? All right, so we have Urgent Necropsy available here, so a lot of this will just depend on what they do, to be honest. I'm going to flip this up. I think it's just the best play. If they have a murder, it's not good. Soul Innervation would also be annoying. Toxin Analysis, I guess, would stink. Slice? Oh, it might be Slice. Okay. All right. Well, things are proceeding to get worse and worse for us. The problem is just this card is just so annoying to deal with. I could have taken... I mean, alternatively, I could have blocked like Repeat Offender and then uh, untapped... Or something along those lines. I don't know. I'm just going to kill these two cards right at this point. We're just going to have to find a way to deal with this Phoenix. X is four. Okay. Something nice. Rubble Belt Maverick. All right, let's go get a land here first. Let's go get our hedge maze again, I guess. And we're going to be digging here, but we're, I mean, this is a clock. Let's get that out of there. Let's play Rubble Belt Maverick. Find something big. Um, That's... That's a big threat, so I guess I'll keep it. It's not awesome. We can also use get a leg up to like for one turn. And we also have unauthorized exit for another turn. Yeah, that informant got us pretty good though. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just going to play this face up. I mean, is there a world where we can race them? Oh, it's a dog walker? Oof. Red herring. Oh, man. Yikes. Okay, so we can put Rubble Belt Maverick in front of Dog Walker. Vengeful Creeper in front of Red Herring, I guess. And see what they do. I assume they're going to crack the Red Herring. Toxin Analysis. Huh. I mean... Do I have life gain in my deck? <laughs> they probably want to sack this, right? No. Panther. What does Panther do? So we're going to go down to one life. They're going to have four creatures in play. 
right? So I don't know that the Panther is good enough here. Because they didn't sack it. So we go to one and then they have four creatures. Yeah, I have to I have to bin the Panther. Alright. I, I don't know what I can draw here, to be honest. Out cold? Out cold? <sighs> Alright. Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. Well played, opponent. I think um, the pivotal moment was when I chose to block Rift Burst Hellion. When I chose to block the Lamplight Phoenix with Rift Burst Hellion, my thought process there was uh, I don't. It doesn't get blown out by Galvanize or Chases on, but of course, and if they had Murder, it gets me anyways. So the cards that really get me there are Toxin Analysis and Slice or Soul Innervation. And I don't know. I felt that I was behind enough where I had to make that block, but. Perhaps I could have just blocked the repeat offender instead. All right. Good game. Oh, you know what? All things considered, uh, can't ever be sad about a six and three finish. And we are still ranked number two. And that's, that's what's important. You know why? Because in my next video, I can put rank two in my thumbnail. That's what that really, then, and that's what really matters. All right. So finish with six and three. Um, we lost to a great Boros deck with a War Leader's Call. We lost to a five color deck that that one was really tough to lose to, but I mean, it's fine. Sometimes you're going to lose. And then this one, our opponent just had a good draw with, with Rakdos and uh, they ended up beating us with that Phoenix, which we had a really tough time with unless we found Makeshift Binding. That would have been the perfect card as well. But all in all, I thought this deck was pretty solid. Um, I thought the games were pretty good. And uh, we just made the we just got maximum value out of basically all of our cards in a lot of our games. So I'm really just happy with how the games were played in general. There might have been a couple of slots because Magic is a complicated game where I could have maybe done things a little bit differently. But overall, uh, we were the ones that were get able to leverage our spells and tricks better than our opponents in most of the games. So you know. And whatever happens, happens, and you pick up the wins and losses along the way, right? You draft as well as you can, you play as well as you can, and then the results are the results. So overall, very happy with this deck, with the 6-3 and three finish. You can never be sad about that. Urgent Necropsy was incredible. Airtight Alibi was randomly super, super good. We had an okay curve. Um, we tried to stay open for most of the draft. Um, I even mentioned that I didn't necessarily want to be blue-green because I haven't been doing well with them. And part of that is maybe I was looking to force blue-green or try to be blue-green when I definitely shouldn't have been. And I felt like at least in this draft, it was an instance where green, blue and green were open. It was the color combination that we were supposed to do, uh, be in. And by reading the signals and ultimately landing there is what ended up giving us the 6-3 and three deck. Because if you think about how this draft started, we started with the dog walker right? We started with a dog walker into a market watch phantom, something along those lines. And we were able to get away from that slowly, right? Because we started with that and we're like, well, what if we're green white? Let's take some green cards. Okay. Well, we're getting a bunch of blue cards late. What if we just start taking some blue cards and see what happens? And then we ultimately ended up with this because white was super, super not open, but ultimately pretty happy with the deck out colds were also fantastic. So now we are rank number two. Rank number two, there's only one person left. We all know who that is. Eakin, I'm coming for you. Not today though, it'll maybe be tomorrow. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you enjoyed this content and wanted to support this channel in other ways, I did launch my Patreon channel. The link is in the description below. Shout out to all the current patrons, patrons rather. Really do appreciate your support. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you tomorrow.